Some new huge details were revealed about the Jake Allen trade as another trade has gone down that directly impacts Montreal's return. Plus, Kent Hughes spoke out on exactly why he did the trade when he did. We have a lot of new stuff to break down, so stick around for this episode of Habs Digest. But before we get into the video, guys, you know what's coming. It's trade deadline. Moves have come. And even though Tanner Pearson and David Savard maybe haven't been traded like we thought, Kent Hughes made a couple moves at the deadline. And if you feel like the Habs and you need some extra excitement with your roster and draft picks, well, it's time to move. And Rentals.ca has you covered. They are Canada's largest apartment hunting network. You can get houses, apartments, condos, whatever you want. All the way from Victoria to Thunder Bay to everywhere in between, all the way to the East Coast. Rentals.ca has you covered. What's so nice, and check out their website, guys. Really easy to use. Great maps where you can really find the neighborhoods of your choosing in the city that you're looking for and find really great listings right there. Rentals.ca, big Habs fans. Go check them out in the pinned comment or the description. I know we've done a lot of these, but they've been huge supporters of the channel. So big shout out to you, Rentals.ca. Jesse, let's move into this topic. And uh, there's been some, well, a lot of talk around this Jake Allen trade. And we have a few things to get into, including a trade the New Jersey Devils made. So again, we'll get into that a bit later because that can directly impact what happens to Montreal. But Kent Hughes, he had his press conference today. And uh, well, he said a lot of things. Now, the first thing that we got to go through is the update on the Jake Allen uh, pick that came back, right? The conditional third round pick. So the official conditions have been revealed, first of all. And it's if Allen plays in 40 or more games next season alone, 24-25, with whatever team he's on. So they, uh, that's actually really interesting. Um, the Habs will get the pick as long as that team makes the playoffs as well. So that playoff thing is not something we knew until I, I looked at this on Cap Friendly. So that's the first thing um, that's pretty interesting to me, Jesse, and we'll get into that a bit later, but the big thing here, Kent Hughes straight up said there was no goalie market. He was asked in his press conference, like, why did you wait until now for an Allen move when, you know, you, you had three goalies all season? He said, well, it's not that we didn't want to. There was no market, and I mean, just amazing that he was able to stay so patient and pull off the great move at the right time. No, it's so true, and you know what? Even if it ends up just becoming a third round pick, after all, that's still going to be okay. You know, we are hearing a lot of rumors of fourth. You know, there were some really low ball offers. Even the Leafs were offering six round picks. Just disrespectful stuff. You know, that Kent, he had his price and he was really going to stick to that, you know, for sure. So, you know, you have to really feel here with, with the Montreal Canadiens that, you know, they, they did good. They got their value, you know, that they needed to. But, I mean, you have to feel like Jake Allen's probably going to be a little bit more of the proven guy here, right? So, there still might be a chance, you know, it's about half a season that that he would get that still, right? You know, so interesting to see the second's not completely out of reach, just given that he's going to be the more tenured guy with whoever he's paired with. That's the thing, right? So, like, Jake Allen, again, he, it's been a while since he played. Like, he's not a consistent guy who's played, like, 40 games every year or anything. So, the odds of him getting that, well, it depends on a lot of things. But one big thing went down that certainly changed those odds as the New Jersey Devils, a good bit after the trade deadline had expired, I guess this went down just before, they traded Vitek Vanacek, who was, uh, well, coming into this season, they thought he was going to be their 1A, but uh, no, not anymore. He didn't have a great season. They traded him away for Capo Kakinen. Now, Capo Kakinen is a fairly young goalie who was playing with the abysmal San Jose Sharks, and he was with the Minnesota Wild before that, but he's established himself as a very solid player. In fact, when Minnesota traded him away to the Sharks, a lot of people were kind of saying, oh, really? Why? Well, it was to make room for, you know, Marc-Andre Fleury and Jesper Wallstedt to come up eventually, and they tra traded for Philip Gustafson. But Kakinen has a decent track record. And as you can see, him and Jake Allen are both evaluated on cap friendly as 1B-level goalies. The big thing here, Jesse, to me... I know the Devils have Nico Dawes. I know they have Akira Schmid, but these guys are 23 years old. They're restricted free agents this year. They'll get some contracts or something. But to me, this says that the Devils, I'm not sure if Devils fans might disagree, but I think the Devils will go with Jake Allen and Kapo Kakinen as the 1A, 1B tandem heading in to next year. Uh, well, sorry, Jake Allen at the very least and Kapo Kakinen for the rest of this year. And as he's gone, they bring up one of Dawes or Schmid. And like you said, Jake Allen, well, he's going to be that tenured guy next year, whether it's Dawes or Schmid who comes up or all three. You got to think if the Devils are in a playoff hunt, which again, this pick has a stipulation for a playoff team. Allen is probably going to get the majority of the starts. This has big implications here. Very interesting to see. And they might have gotten their 1A that they needed there from the Sharks in this trade because I was wondering, I mentioned in the previous video that 
you know, okay, it seems like they got their 1B and Jake Allen, but what are they going to do about the 1A? So I think we're seeing the reason for this trade and why it kind of makes sense. I think the Devils did a very good trade. I think the Colorado Avalanche are going to be kicking themselves that they kind of took care of so many other things on their team, but maybe not one of the places where you really need it the most because Devils, great team. They play a great style of hockey, four checking, but now to get that kind of 1B and Allen and then maybe that 1A and Kakinen, you know, might be that good kind of tandem together. I could see that kind of working and at least definitely a big improvement over yesterday just in their goaltending situation. Yeah, Colorado, I think, is definitely kicking themselves. Like, I know, Kakinen on this expiring deal, there definitely was some potential for some salary retention there as well if Colorado were to go get him. But it seems like New Jersey's going to give him a bit of a tryout, right? They got rid of Vanacek, that bigger deal. And it kind of, like we said, it clears the way for Allen. Maybe they re-sign Kakinen this offseason. It's definitely possible. But I think this is great news for Montreal. I think, like you said, Allen, as this guy who, who has that veteran leadership, 40 games is tough. But unless the Devils plan to go get another goalie or resign Kakin and whatever, it looks like it's going to be Allen and two very young guys. Not so dissimilar from Montreal, even though Sam Montembeau is a bit older than these other guys. And even Primo, Dawes, and Schmid are still young. Jesse, when, when you have young guys like that, I mean, like we saw in Montreal, sometimes if you're a team that wants to win some games, even if you're a team that doesn't necessarily want to win games like the Montreal Canadiens, those young goalies, when you have a more proven veteran guy... It sure seems like around the league sometimes that if, if you have a reason to go with the veteran, you will give them maybe a little more leeway than the young guys. A little bit more stability, right? So this is actually great news to hear, right? Because it's kind of, we're really hoping that he plays over that uh, 40 plus games, right? To get that second round pick. Because we got to remember very recently, we selected Lane Hudson in the second round. This is the type of sneaky, good type of players that, that you can get, right? You know, with the they say there's a big kind of dive after the third round. First and second, right? You can get some absolute beauty. So, I mean, this is absolutely amazing. I think just around the league, teams are just so impressed. I can't use, you know, just really just having his price, you know, and, and kind of sticking by it, right? And of course, this just works out best, though. This is kind of a win-win for the Devils, but this is a win for us. Just kind of freeing, freeing it up, you know. Now we're really going to get a chance to see what we have even more so in Montembeau, who is playing great, but still has even more to prove, but also in Primo. This is just, we're going to be able to see him play more. We're going to get such a better read. You have to feel like maybe this could help kind of help with his confidence even more. Just feel like he's got a little bit of a bigger leash that he's kind of solidified his place as an NHLer, which has been huge for him and his kind of roller coaster sort of progression, right? So maybe this is going to really bring out the best in primes as well. Yeah, I, I, you got to think so. I mean, Hughes in his presser said he was confident Primo was going to get claimed off waivers. We heard that earlier this season too. He reiterated that today saying that they had no choice but to waive him. But hey, the trade came at the right time. The Habs made a great move, low risk move for the Devils. They get a Stanley Cup caliber goalie who very well could play a lot of meaningful games for them going forward. And the Habs get a nice draft pick that they can hopefully use at the draft to package for something else. And uh, we might just be diving into that in another video. Video. So you'll want to turn on notifications for everything we have going on here at Habs Digest. And while you're down there, hit subscribe. We have all the latest Habs news, rumors, reports, everything like that. So if you enjoyed this video, hit that button down below. We'd really appreciate it. That'll do it for this episode of Habs Digest. And like I said, if you enjoyed, hit subscribe, hit like. We'd love if you did. I'm Josh Goss, my co-host, Jesse Poirier. We'll catch you in the next one.